Today, we're going to make our cauldron and our fire and our logs. So, to make our cauldron, we have some different browns for the wood. We have uh, different reds that I'll have to grab and pull over here. We have the a piece of fabric that we're going to put it on. And I'm looking at making the black cauldron uh, this black going on this black. So we really have a close differential. So I'm kind of debating that. But that is is currently my black. And if I do it so close to that color, um, we have black thread that we're using. And I just have to see how that turns out because I don't have a darker black right now. Um, I've done a few searches and uh, I'm kind of wishing I did the background in purple and that way the cauldron might really pop a little bit more. But I think with the decorating the flames, we're going to be able to pull that off. So let's go ahead and get started on our cauldron. Welcome back to Where Wendy Creates. Today we are working on our cauldron and we have it drawn out on our paper. We have uh, different color reds for our flames flaming up and different kind of woods. So we have the fusible on the back of the fabric. We can go ahead and draw here what we would like our wood to look like and our different pieces and get those all stacked up. And we're gonna make our cauldron today out of this. And the pattern that we have created calls for this black piece to be our mat. So let's go ahead and start on our cauldron and we can cut it out or we can draw a new one. So let's see how we do on that. And we can draw it and then put the wood on top of it and kind of layer it up. So I think what we're gonna do is try and rough it out using up as little as possible of our uh, fusible backed fabric and we're going to have it this tall and we're going to round our sides up round our sides up have the lip come out and that is going to be around for our cauldron back in and the lip come out like so. So how does that look for our cauldron? Now again, you can cut this out or you can draw one of your own. Now we know the fabric behind us that we're using is all black. So now we have to decide for the lip of the bowl, do we want that being a different color or do we want to thread paint that lip of our bowl in with our opening in our pot. So we can do that with another color fabric or we can simply thread paint it for the opening. And I think what we want to do is maybe get a different color and put in here that other color and then we're going to have our spoon coming out so we might make a slit in the fabric to have our spoon coming out um so that's probably how we're going to position that and then all of our wood overlapping the bottom so let's go ahead and cut out our cauldron see how it looks on our quilt block that we're creating and I am using the paper scissors because we don't want to mess up our fabric scissors. All right. And I know raw edge applique and the drawing, if you're not used to drawing, can be very intimidating. Uh, but it's okay to draw it out a few times and then just go for it. Just go for it. Ta-da! All 
right, there is the start of our beautiful cauldron. Now, it really doesn't seem to pop on our other black fabric. So, and this is the time that we really want to make that determination if we're going to make any changes to our color choices to have a bigger contrast. And I kind of find I feel a little like I may want to go ahead and change the pattern, use a different color background, but then it's gonna throw it off in the quilt to be a little bit different. It won't match up with all the other black squares that we have. So even though this is big and bold and beautiful, let's go ahead, cut out the rest of our pieces and then we'll make the final determination. So first, before we do some flames, let's go ahead and cut out some of the different wood looks we have to make our sticks across the bottom and see how that goes. Now we see on the back of the fabric, not all of it has our double uh, sided fusible on it. So we want to uh, not do too much of the fabric without that. But we're gonna go ahead and cut out pieces like logs and put them on our backing. And we're gonna save our scraps, both non-fusible and fusible because we can always, always, always use them again for something. Okay, and our different logs, again, we're trying to create that fire flame look. We're going to somehow cut this down the middle. Going to have other pieces on top, underneath, different this way and that way. So it's going to cover up the fact that we have uh, some points and some non points. And crisscross those. We can come back to that one. Let's do a couple of this color log. Some big, some skinny. You know how logs for the fireplace, they're not always cut the same. We're just going to cut this one right down the middle and we're going to have it laying in here and another one over here that orange color we want to get completely away from our fire now with this let's see if we can get some different colored logs into that with this And I really like this multicolor. I would love to do whole blocks into a quilt using this. So I just think it's absolutely stunning. All right, so we have a bunch of pieces. Let's finish cutting these out and then laying them in. And I cut these a lot thinner because I was trying to get the different colorations on the, the logs. Now we just want to lay them around, see how we can 
lap them in with the rest of our wood that we already have here. Make them look like a nice, beautiful pile of wood. Hmm, I kind of like that. So just kind of thrown together, toss turns, intersected a little bit, really brings the bottom in. Now I gotta remember that we've cut this larger than it is. So we're really gonna have to have an inch, an inch, and an inch that's gonna be cut off of this block because when you do raw edge applique, um, we can often get um, our stitches pulling the fabric a little bit. So we wanna oversize the block that we're gonna do the raw edge applique on and then retrim the block the proper size for the quilt. So um, I'm okay with the start of that. So let's go ahead and put our browns to the side. And now let's grab our beautiful reds. Now in the drawing uh, that Sylvia helped me out with, I'm Wendy, uh, she made these beautiful flames like the top of candle flames. And I really love that. So let's see if we can mimic some of that in with our flames that we're gonna create here. Um, and again, I want as little waste to no waste as possible. And this one was already cut. So we're gonna kind of keep that thought with our flames. and see if we can create some nice angles out of that to give us some flare-ups. And we're just gonna kinda, now we have to take this all apart because we gotta take the paper off the back. We're just getting a good feel for what we might want it to look like right now. So we're gonna kinda put the flames right underneath. You know, I'm feeling I might even want some orange flames in here. Um, I know if you have a uh, fire pit, a fireplace, you've even seen blue flames, green flames, all color flames. So we wanna have this perky, different colors, uh, keep it up away from the bottom of the, uh, at least an inch and a quarter, because we're gonna leave a, lose a quarter to the seam allowance. We're gonna lose an inch for trimming our block up nice. I like those red flames. Now let's start with some of this color and see what we can create out of this as well. So I'm just gonna hack it off just about right here, and we're gonna use this square and see if we can't create some flames as well. Okay, and I'm seeing a lot of that Let's see if we can make it like a jagged flame. Let that coming right out of the top front. Cover that up with a little bit more wood chips going across there. And maybe some little spikies here and there under a couple of logs. Little spikies. This one too bold, too much out front. Maybe we're gonna do this. Let's do this flame in the back and this flame up here out of the front. What do you think? I think that's starting to grow on me a little bit. I, I even like the raw edge effect. Um, now, some people don't like the raw edge effect. So if this is for you, I love it. If this is not for you, at least maybe you'll pick up a couple of uh, pointers from it. Maybe you try your hands at it. You might find that you actually enjoy it. So I'm feeling real good about that down there so far. So we can always add more to it. But for now, I think we're gonna set that aside. Now we wanna look at the spoon. Um, so how are we going to have the handle of the spoon? The handle of the spoon is probably, should be a wood look. I was thinking about playing it with a silver, um, but I'm thinking the wood look might be a little bit better. And it's just really a handle of the spoon shooting out of here, kind of at an angle. So we're going to have it a little bit bowed, a little bit straight. 
And how long should that spoon be? It's gonna be right here. I have to keep it within the picture. So I'm really thinking this is long enough right here. So let's go ahead and cut off a piece. And then again, I keep all my scraps. They make great eyeballs. Uh, they make great uh, little features. We can even throw more wood pieces, chips in the fire pit. And I think more flames out of the bottom of the fire might be good too. So we're gonna play with that idea. Um, but we can always, now I think my spoon is twice as wide as it needs to be. Um, it's about just perfect for the length here, but definitely too wide. So let's see if we can bow it a little bit, round it off at the top, and then we're gonna bow it back in for the length of the spoon. And then I thin, I, oh, did I make it the, maybe we'll have it from this side. And then I think I'm gonna put a slit in the fabric and stick this through it. So it's coming, or I can do the goopy goopy stuff and put, okay. If we do the boil, boil, toilet trouble, the uh, stuff inside of the pot, ah, now we're talking. Do I want to do the whole way around or do I just want to do the goopy goopy that's inside of it? Huh. And what color to make that? Hit the comments below. What do you think? Um, what color should I make the inside goopy goop of the cauldron that is uh, on fire here? Eh, eh, eh. Hit in the comments. Let me know. Um, but until then, we are going to go ahead and uh, see if maybe one of our scraps, we can pull some orange for the goo, and then we can change it if we're not happy with it. I um, think I'm going to go ahead and take, let's see, um, I'd like some of the black goopy, maybe spritting some out of it. Um, so let's try a piece like this. And then we can cut it down to whatever size that we think we want. And that, of course, is too bowed. So we're going to trim off some of the bottom. And now for the length, uh, it's probably actually about the right length there. So the goo coming out of the cauldron, the spoon right behind it. Um, I think I got to cut off this end. How's that for the top of the cauldron? With the frog's legs and the toads cooking in that bubbling, bubbling, and with some, maybe some silver thread that I can outline the whole top of the lid in. What do you think? How's my cauldron looking? I know I talked about doing handles, but I think we're gonna leave this one just like that. Now, with the quilt that I'm making, I actually have 12 raw edge appliques that I'm gonna be doing. So with my 12 raw edge appliques, we could actually do a completely another cauldron um, in a different color, in a different spot. Uh, but what I'm gonna do now is this is double fusible on fabric. So I took the scissors, I slid a little piece. Now we're gonna stick our fingernail right in between the waxy part of the back of this paper and the glue that's on the fabric. And we're gonna start taking all of our pieces and taking the paper off the back. So the next step will actually be going over to the iron, um, ironing our pieces down, making them pretty much permanent. And then from that point, we will um, come back here, turn on the sewing machine, and with the appropriate color threads, we're going to raw edge applique all of this on with thread painting. So I'm excited about that. We're gonna have fun, use different reds, make a little more, um, umph and excitement, almost a 3D effect with the uh, thread painting on the flames, or at least that's my intent. So let's go ahead and pull off the backing. Sometimes it doesn't want to come. Sometimes you can go a little bit quicker than other times. 
Um, so just uh, take your, your patience, however that works, and we're going to go through, put them done up here, so I know what I've done and what I haven't done. And again, this is a, a little bit of a time-consuming process, but it's fun, it's well worth it, and you get some really great designs that you personally have uh, designed. It's not coming already on the fabric. It's your artistic uh, vision, if you will, that you are creating this uh, beautiful applique out of. Okay. And yes, 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 feel free to copy my ideas. Make this quilt for yourself. Yes, you may. All right. And pretty much anything I do on uh, Where Wendy Travels, Where Wendy Creates, or Where Wendy Creates, please, please, please feel free to go ahead and create as similar as you like or use it to get ideas to create your own wonderful um, concepts. And we're just gonna go ahead and keep pulling the paper off of this, and then we're gonna go over to the ironing board, and I'm gonna show you how I press it down. Um, you do want to use the instructions for the fusible double-sided backing that you have purchased uh, when you purchase it. Uh, but I'll tell you how I do it. I usually uh, press it down for at least five to 10 seconds. And when you're putting it on the whole sheets of uh, fabric, you can pretty much slide it across and, and do like that. But when you're doing these in a pattern, you wanna drop it on it, pull it off. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you in just a moment. So just take me a moment here to take the rest of the paper off and we'll go to the ironing board. And we're just taking our scissors, opening them up, grabbing a piece, popping the paper on the back, seeing if we can stick our finger in between the, you can tell that's glued from the fabric. It's keeping the glue on there, pulling the rest of the paper off, and then setting it in the done. And we're going to go ahead and relay all of this out one more time, but we've got a good feel for the look of it, and we were pleased with it, so we're going to uh, mimic it as close as we can over on the ironing board before we glue it all down. Okay, so we have moved ourselves over to the ironing board and we've turned on the iron so it's starting to get heated up and we're going to go ahead and start putting our pieces we've already taken off the paper um, onto our canvas or our quilting block and decide how exactly we want these pieces of wood and our flames to look. We're just going to start crissing and crossing. Definitely want a flame coming up near the sides. And this one, I think I liked it in the very back. Let's put our spoon and our liquid in our cauldron. Huh, looking at it right side up, maybe. Down, hold it down. How's that look? Okay, let's put our spoon in. Tuck our spoon under. We were going to cut the fabric and put our spoon in, but I don't think that's necessary if we put it under the food that's in there. Okay. We have pieces of wood we're putting in. Flames up on the side. And 
I'm kind of working behind the camera here, trying to stick them in. And I know we're putting them in different orders than what we had in before. in here on this side. Oh! Okay. And our iron is telling us it's ready for us. Okay, let's put a little flame under here. Now what do you think? We want to have the bulk of it done right now. I'm not liking the end of this right here. Put my spoon back up where it goes. Oops, we got to be an inch and a quarter away from the top of our I think we had them this way, didn't we? This end I'm not happy with. This end I'm not happy with. Chip down a little bit. Like that down there. See, every time you take it apart and put it back together, it's going to be another little puzzle. And I know we had a flame on top of that flame. Do you think we need another one? Okay, let's back you up, see the wood. We're a good inch and a quarter from the bottom and it's almost in the middle. I can cut more off of one side than the other, but I think we're okay there. So now, what do we think? To iron that down, be nice to have another crisscross right here. Have that duplication right on top of itself. If we had this coming right here, it might distract a little bit. Flames going up. Okay, let's try that. Maybe we can add one more little piece over here, but we're gonna take the iron straight up and put it straight down, straight up and straight down. So we're gonna one, two, three, four, five, straight up. And we're gonna bring it straight down. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna lift. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm pretty confident we're stuck everywhere. So we're just going to do it for about two seconds in different places all over the top. And we've double checked, we've verified all of the paper was off of our pieces. So now we just wanna make sure the edges are stuck really well. And we can go back over to the sewing machine and start sewing, doing our actual raw edge applique. So what do you think, my friends? I'm thinking maybe a couple more sticks on that fire would have been uh, perhaps a little bit better. I'm not sure if I'm feeling comfortable all right here on this side. So maybe a little one right here. You think that's okay? Hmm. It doesn't look fully stuck. It probably was, but touching it again won't hurt. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn off our iron, unplug our machine, go back over to the sewing table. excited about this. Uh, we have our raw edge applique ironed down, and I want to show you a trick. May or may not be necessary, but let's go ahead and show you. And I have it right behind me. Sorry for that interruption. Um, but freezer paper, I often use freezer paper on the back of this 
and that way the stitches are going through and they're holding a little bit better. They may not gather the fabric as much with my stitching. So let's go ahead and put a piece of freezer paper underneath our stitches. Ooh, that's way too much. That's way too much. And again, this freezer paper, I will use it over and over and over again. And then when I sew on it, if it's a big enough piece, I may have to then uh, throw it away. Now you can iron the freezer paper onto the back of this, which I forgot uh, to let you know when we were over there. But we're gonna go ahead and put it under the sewing machine. I'm gonna start at one edge of the black, go up, skip over my spoon, come down in a bound, back up, and I may do a couple of rows around like this, and then we'll go back down the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. And what I'm gonna be doing is, uh, I think I'm gonna start with a three on a zigzag stitch. Uh, let's start out with a one to get by the flame, and then I'm gonna switch it over to a three. Oh, we are turned on. Okay, so let's go to a one width. And I'm on a one length. And I'm gonna move it up to a two width. And I'm gonna pop it up to a three and a half width. Now we're gonna come all the way up to our spoon. Now to go around our little curvature, I'm gonna have the needle down on the inside and then I'm going to turn it. So that way I have those firm stitches on the inside, roll it a little bit in the neck of my machine and slowly one stitch at a time, come up to my spoon. I'm gonna back stitch and then I'm going to needle up Come to the other side of the spoon. I'm gonna put myself on a one to get away from the length of the spoon. And then I'm gonna dial myself up, getting a wider and wider stitch. Up to a two. And up to a three. And I'm keeping the, the kettle blackness and the back of my mat right in the middle of my sewing foot. on my flame on the other side I'm gonna dial my width down to a two and down to a one come right up to that flame back it up a little bit and then with needle down I'm gonna swing it whoopsie needle down hello needle down I'm gonna swing it all the way around rolling up my paper to get it through there and then we're gonna come all the way back out Two, three. Go real slow around the curvature. And I'm loving it. Right up to the spoon. And I'm dialing it down. Okay, now instead of going across that way, I'm going to come back and then we're going to go on the bottom of the, the lip of the bowl. And I'm loving the texture on this. I'm going to show you a close up in just a minute. Okay, 
So I'm back up at the spoon on the other side, needle down, pivot, and we're gonna go back around the whole length of the underside of that lip again. And that's to make it a clear picture that that is a lip on the cauldron. And we do want it to stand out from the rest of the cauldron. And I'm on, and again, I'm on a three width for my zigzag stitch. And I'm on a one length. And there you go. Okay, so let me take this out of here and I'm gonna show you a little bit closer what we are looking like. And we're gonna trim the thread from either side of the spoon. And let me show you close. Okay, so let's take a look at our black thread. I'm kind of wishing I had moved the orange before I ironed it down a little bit differently, but we can say we're looking at it from this angle and be okay with a little bit larger lip uh, than we're experiencing on the other side. Um, but here is my stitching on the black. I'm very happy with that. And on the back, you can see that this is uh, going through the paper. And when we're done with that, we just tear off the wax paper. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start on our flames. I've already put red into red thread into the sewing machine. So let's go ahead and start on the red flames. And on the red flames, just so I can tell you what I'm thinking, is down here, I'm gonna to go to a three width, dial it down to a two and a one at the point, come back one, two width, and three. And then do the same. So I'm probably gonna go over these each twice. I'm not going to go over this because we're going to go over the wood there. We're just going over the red on each of these points. I think I'm going to use the same red thread and then if I'm not happy we'll come back with another thread and put some additional coats on it. But I can even do inside with different lines of flame because we have different layers of flame coming up in different colors. All right so let's go ahead and start on that now. So we've moved over to in front of the sewing machine so you can see what we have. And we're going to uh, go ahead and turn it upside down and start on our flames. So when I start on the first flame, I'm gonna line it up between the wood, the flame, and the edge of the cloth. I'm gonna hold on to my thread on the back here so it doesn't pull. We're dialing it down. I think I have to in the beginning because the wood is tilted. So I do have to dial it down in the beginning, although it's not necessary if it's flat coming off of the piece. Okay, come forward and then I can move it up. I'm on a two, now I'm at my three and I'm gonna dial it back down around the top. Okay, so now I'm gonna dial it down to a two. And dialing it down in width means that your zigzag stitch comes closer to a point, the less narrow. And needle down. We're going to go ahead and roll the paper in the pattern to stick it under the neck of the quilt of the sewing machine. And then we're going to come down again. I'm on about one and a half. We're coming away from the point. I'm dialing it up to a two and up to a three. And I'm trying to tell you that I'm doing that because, oops, let's put us on the outside, turn us around and go back up and across the flame. And uh, I, I uh, often dial it and don't share that information. So I did want to make sure I'm sharing that with you so you know what I'm doing. And I just kind of keep one hand down here, the other one on my dial. So I'm dialing it down, dialing it down, coming to my point. Rolling it back around so it fits under the neck of the sewing machine. And coming down the flame on this side. And dialing it back up. down to the point. Okay. 
And just when I pull it up like that and pull my threads across, we're gonna have to come back and trim those threads. flame. Well, let's do this piece first. Flame sticking through here. And we've got a tiny flame, so we want to dial it down. Dial it up. baby flame. Do the same. Dial it down. All right. I'm pulling it up. You get a better look at that. And then we're going to come over, twist our paper all the way around, winding it from the corner to do our frame starting on this side. Okay, now we should be on three for width. Deciding if I want to go up or I want to go down. So let's start at a one. Lock in my stitch. Two. And up to a three. Okay, 
let's go ahead and see what we did there. Okay, we're going to trim our extra threads. Let's go ahead and take it around to the next one real quick, though. Then we can come back and trim that thread. And I knew something was wrong. I broke my thread. Okay, so let's trim this off. Cut the bobbin thread. Pull it out. We've got a couple more um, to go on here. But looks like we still have bobbin thread. And it felt like it nested. It did not nest. But how are we looking on our flames? So this is our last flame. i got to trim a couple of threads here. Okay, we switched over to brown thread. And we're going to go ahead and sew the uh, raw edge applique, um, a zigzag stitch, on our spoon coming out of the top of our cauldron. And I'm going to dial it to about a two and three quarters zigzag. Now, you can, uh, depending upon what you're comfortable with, torque the fabric to go around the end of the spoon. Or you can do about three stitches, stop, needle down, foot up, pivot, three stitches, three stitches, three stitches, and go around the end of the spoon. So it's whatever you're comfortable doing. And of course, we've put a light brown thread in. And now I'm gonna stop the needle on the outside and pivot because no matter how you good are, good you are um, the end of the spoon is quite an animal so it's nice to stop and restart when you're doing it and i'm going to trim off my thread as i go okay and i'm going to turn around let me put my needle down, turn around, and go back down the length and around to my spoon again. So maybe you can see how that's coming. We'll show you a real close up real soon. Okay, slow down when you get to the head of the spoon. Needle down, and we want to just kind of curl up our freezer paper and our fabrics to bring them through the neck of the sewing machine, and about three stitches at a time as we pull it through. Sometimes you just have to twist it up a different direction. All right. Needle down, Put up. Now we're going to go ahead and pull it out, needle up, and trim our thread from the bottom. And we're going to hopefully show you a little bit better. We got really rough around that edge of that. I may end up pulling some of those threads out because I don't like how it looks right here. We got off kelter. 
Um, but now we're gonna jump and go down to the wood and start on some of the lighter brown and then we're gonna switch to a darker brown thread and do more of the wood. And this is gonna break up that straight line of the wood, give it a little jagged look, which I like jagged. And wood that you're burning is usually jagged, usually full of splinters and texture. And it's okay to crush and crinkle that freezer pan. It is doing its job by being an extra layer, helping keep our fabric from gathering with those stitches. Okay, jump over to this piece of wood. What I do? Losing my light. Does anybody else have a singer heavy duty? Hit down in the comments if you do. My question is, is my only complaint about the singer heavy duty is the plug that goes in the back of it, it comes out very, very easily. It's not a tight fit, it's a very loose fit. Um, so hit down in the comments, is this just my issue or is anybody else uh, having that same issue? <laughs> down, flip up, pivot, bring that freezer paper around, lay us flat. So let me see, make sure nothing's pulling on my plug. Uh, closest thing is the foot pedal. So let's try that again. Okay, where are we? We're ready to pivot. And roll up that freezer paper and that paper, pull it around and follow the wood back up this direction. I'm just gonna keep on going around all of the light colored wood. two light logs. Then we switch to the darker thread. And as you can see, we're just trying to make a rough edge outline on the outside of that wood, adding some texture, adding some little appeal to that. Okay, skip over up to this little point. And we've switched over to the dark brown thread and we're gonna go ahead and sew down the dark 
darker logs now in our fire pit. And I'm holding on the thread to start, locking in my stitch. And I want that rough texture, so I'm doing a zigzag, and we're gonna go over it a few times. Then I'm gonna jump to the other side of this log and do this, and then come back and do the rest of our dark brown logs. Our tension is a little bit off, which has given us actually that beautiful, this time, uh, black and brown look for the logs. Let's see if I can fix our tension. And our tension is off because we're do doing multiple layers now with several pieces of logs there is what I'm thinking. Because my thread is the same weight that I have been using. Okay, and let's pull that apart, trim our threads on the top and on the bottom, and go to the other side of our fire stack to do the rest of our dark brown wood logs. what I do. Nope, I did not unthread my... thought I unthreaded myself. like our last piece of wood. Trim our threads as we go. bobbin thread. Okay, one more bobbin and our wood is done. put our orange thread in our bobbin and in our top. We're gonna go ahead and go around our bubbling goo. Boil, boil, frog legs and stew. Okay, and I'm going at a three and a length of one. machine keeps unplugging itself as my cord I need to tape it in all right back to our beauty what do you think of those flames huh okay needle down whoopsie needle down oh I'm loving this <laughs> trim your threads as you go trim our threads we have threads everywhere. All right, let's go around the bottom of my goo. My beautiful goo. Pivot, 
it and we've got just a little bit of goo left. Right up to our spoon. Okay, and let's do the big reveal. I am so excited. Let's see how we look. Look at that beautiful, I need to trim the thread. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's see if we can pull back and see it a little bit better. What do we think? We have our cauldron. I love it. Okay, we can add as much thread paint as you want. I'm even thinking a couple of orange bubbles coming up here. How exciting would that be? As it's spitting over the pot, it's so hot, flaming up and warm. Oh, I love it. Okay, what do you think? Hit me in the comments. Let me know. What's my next design? What do you want me to do? See you real soon, my friends.